Hey everyone, I'm Patrick from Football Addicts. What a conference. I just came from a conference in Vegas and this conference is killing the Vegas conference. So you only need to go to Helsinki. So I'm the co-founder and CEO of Forza Football. We are the world's second biggest football application. And uh, we are a team of 17 based in Gothenburg, Sweden. And the app basically lets you follow live scores for over 560 leagues and tournaments in 100 countries. You can set push notifications for your favorite teams. And our mission is to gather the voice of the fans so the users can participate in poll and give the confidence in the squad and manager and chairman and so on. So in terms of numbers, in two and a half years, we have got 5 million downloads. And that is organic downloads, so no advertising pure word of mouth uh, growth. And 50% of those can convert it into a month of active users. So two and a half million users per month. And each month, 50% uh, of those use it on a particular day. So that is our sticky factor. And every month, we got 100 million sessions. We send 800 million push notifications. And we track 1.6 billion events of data in the application. So I will go through some key learnings today, uh, five lessons we have learned in two and a half years, and I will dig deeper to each of them. So the first one is bootstrap. So it has never been easier and cheaper to start a company. But even though this fact, most of the companies I meet, the only thing they talk about is venture capital, and I really, really don't understand it, this. this. This is probably a lot of investors now that will be very angry at me. But it's like the way we started was that we had a consultancy business. So 50% of the time we did consultancy work and 50% we worked on our product. And that made us, uh, gave us the opportunity to fail for, with four products until we actually released this, the fifth successful product. And if you bootstrap, this will provide you free, freedom and freedom is heaven. So that is my first advice. And the second thing is solve an easy problem. So one of our first mistakes was that we overcomplicated things. We tried to do two complicated products uh, for our first four products. And then for the fifth product, we just made it really easy. So we scanned the App Store. We found an app called LiveScore. They were the biggest in the market. We read the reviews. And the majority of the users were complaining about that they were lacking notifications and lineups. So we said, OK, let's make an application that has notifications and lineups. So steal good things and make it, make, this, make it better. So this is the first version compared to their first version. So we, in our application, you could track more days. You could set notifications. You, could set the, you can see the lineups. And you could see videos of all the goals. And we got 300,000 downloads the first month. And four years later, they have actually implemented notifications. But by that time, we have developed our application even more. So most of the companies are slow. So benchmark uh, products that, that are popular and make a better product. And the third lesson is localization. So our first version was translated into 12 languages. It costed us 1,200 euros to make this translation. We translated to uh, Portuguese, uh, German, Italian, Swedish, Danish, and so on. And the reason why you should translate is because it gives you 12 opportunities to actually success. So our first version was a tremendous success in Italy. We got three, 300,000 downloads the first month, and 100,000 downloads of them were in Italy. And we would have never got that if we didn't localize the application to uh, Italian. And I remember myself when I was sitting down and translating the Cayman Islands national team to Italian, in case an Italian football user would like to follow the Cayman Islands national team. And I was thinking, like, what, what am I doing right now? But today, I, I'm really, really glad we did it. And you should also translate everything in, this, in the app. So every string, you should translate every screenshot in the App Store. You should translate every press release. So even the emails we sent out to journalists when we released applications was translated 
to the native language. And uh, so the journalists thought that was Italian, German, Portuguese, and so on. And that was really, really, really important for us. And today, we have 136 contributors. So our users actually are translating, translating our application in a tool called TransFX. It's super easy to use and very, very powerful. So remember to translate. And the fourth lesson is customization. So we were very inspired by gaming on this part. So uh, we, um, we follow 560 leaks in the application. And we realized that no one is actually interested in 560 leagues. So we, we created like a startup guide where it could select the favorite teams. And it turned out that only 4% didn't make any change in the, in, the, um, in the startup guide. So 96% actually interacted with the startup guide. And this means that you will actually, you will actually uh, the user will actually know that I use this application and this application is customized for me then it's a harder thing for them to change the application if they have made this customization. And the last lesson is data. So one thing I regret the most is the fact that we didn't track data properly from the beginning. If you track data, you can actually realize what you should do to growth. From until we only started with this a couple of months ago, a couple of months ago. So this is actually pure luck that we got these two and a half million users. So, and in terms of data, you need to track everything. So every interaction the users can do in the app, you must track that. And if you do that, you can do things like segment your users based on activity and to see how different user groups use the application. So you can move the users to different user groups. And it's, and there's tons of lessons on this on the internet. Who knows this much, much better than me, because I just started working on it. But one of the key things is to find your aha moment. Like, which feature is the feature that lets people actually like, keep retaining, keep using your application, like understanding your application. You can see this by looking at your data. And if you understand it, uh, and if you find it, it's all about getting as many users as possible use that particular feature in your application. And it's also about finding your uninstall moment, like which particular feature makes people actually uninstall your application. We had, I have a pretty good example from our application. So in our startup guide, after a user had selected their favorite teams, we automatically pre-selected all notifications for those teams. But when I met users who have actually uninstalled the app, because 50% uninstalled the app of our users, nine out of 10 of those told me that the reason they uninstalled the app was because they got too many notifications, and they didn't really understand why they got so many notifications. And we, we realized this must have been because of the startup guide. So we started looking at, at our data and to see, could it actually could it actually affect your retention based on the amount of teams you have notifications on? So this is a graph which displays, displays the retention over time based on the amount of notifications you have set. So the green line is the most amount, and the red line is the middle group, 5 to 99 notifications, and the blue line is 0 to 4 notifications. And here you can cre clearly see that, uh, that uh, less notifications is uh, is for, um, less notifications is worse for retention. But if you look at it on a longer period of time, after 65 days, you will actually see that the group with five to nine notifications have a better retention and converts better than the, the group with 10 to 14 notifications. So this is a good example of how you can improve your app with data. Thank you very much.